So, good evening. Let's get started with the new batch. My name is Ritu and I am your trainer. The duration of the course is 40 days and course fee is 4130 that is INR. This is our new batch starting from today. The timings will be 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Let's proceed further. In case you want to ask any question or if you have any query, you can contact me also and we, or you can contact our support team. If you have any batch regarding query, you can contact our support team at the support at the rate logiclabstech.com or you can contact on the on the give numbers given on the screen. You can contact them on the numbers given on the screen. So you can join us on our WhatsApp group also for any updates, for updates regarding the sessions. No batch shifting will be there. Okay, so you need to join our WhatsApp community group for announcement option. First three sessions will be free to attend and on the fourth session, Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting link will be changed and will be shared with the registered participants only, right? And first two session recordings will be uploaded on your on our YouTube channel so that you can, and WhatsApp link will be shared with the community. So you can follow us on our website at the www.logiclabstech.com, Telegram group, Facebook page, YouTube page, Instagram, and LinkedIn account. So let's proceed with the session. Students, whenever we talk about the Python, do you understand what is Python? Python is what? It is a high level programming language. Now it is the hottest language. So let's proceed. It is highly interpreted, high level programming language. Simple, platform independent. Let's proceed with the Python programming. So what is Python? Python is a general purpose, simple, platform independent, highly interpreted and high level programming language. It is the highest selling language. Now it is a general purpose, means it is usable whenever we want to use the Python. Nowadays it is useful, we can use the Python programming in the automobile industry, in the schools, in the colleges, in the universities, or if we go ahead with the CAD and CAM-based applications, we can go all the way. If you want to develop the software also, we need to go ahead with the Python. We need to have knowledge with the Python, even if we go with the data encapsulation, data abstraction, and if we want to be the data analysis, and if we want to proceed our careers in the software industry, so we, we need to have the knowledge of Python. Even if we want to proceed with the AI industry, we need to have the knowledge of Python, which is mandatory. So what kind of applications one can develop by using the Python? See, as I've told you that website applications, we can develop the websites also. We can be the software, we can develop the gaming applications also. If we want to proceed our career in AI, like if you want to know, have the knowledge of machine learning or deep learning, we should first, we should have the knowledge of Python. Now, if we want to proceed with CAD and CAM based applications, business applications, as I've told you, the automation industry, data visualization, animation of automation industry, data analysis, data analytics, if you want to proceed your career in that, so all such types of applications can be developed using the Python. Education industry is nowadays, even if you proceed your career, if you go to the education industry, they also use the Python for their applications. So we, if we want to solve, like with the Python, students, please remember, we can solve numerical mathematical operations and even the complex mathematical operations can be solved very easily with the help of 
Python. So let's proceed further. So when we start with the Python, when we start with the Python, first of all, we learn about the history of Python. Then versions of Python, which MNCs are using, downloading process of Python software, Python programming is inspired from which languages, and then we'll discuss about the features of Python. So shall we start with the Python? Any questions you want to ask, you can raise your hand regarding the Python. I'll answer you first, then we'll proceed further. Any questions? No questions. Okay. In case of any query, students, I want my session to be very interactive. So I want you people to answer me whatever I want, if whatever I'll ask you, whether in yes or no. Okay. That will be easier for me to understand that you people are getting it. Will that be fine? Will that be fine, students? Yes. That's nice. So that will be helpful for you, uh, for me. Let's proceed. Now we were talking, now we are about to talk about the history of Python. Let's start with the history of Python. Student, when we talk about the history of Python, as we know, it is a general purpose programming language which is used in many applications. So, in Python, it was, uh, if we talk about the Python programming, it was conceived in the year 1980 and implemented in year 1989. So, the Rosen, Hudo Van Rosen, who was the father of Python programming language, started working on Python software in year 1980 and it implemented in the year 1989. Means officially it was, but officially it was released in the year 1991, February 20. Python programming language was developed by Guido Van Rosen. Guido Van Rosen was the father of Python programming language and it was developed at CWI, that is Centrum Viscunde Informatica in Netherlands. ABC programming language is the predecessor of Python programming language. Right? And Python programming language is now managed and maintained by a non-commercial organization that is Python Software Foundation, PSF. So this is a non-commercial organization which is taking care of Python nowadays. Official website of Python Software Foundation is www.python.org from where we can easily download Python software okay freely. We need not to pay anything for this. So what I have told you it was conceived in the year 1980 implemented in the 1989 but officially it was released in 1991 february 20. van rosen is the father of python programming language and it was developed at centrum viscounty informatica that is cwi institute in netherlands abc programming language is the predecessor of python programming language and it now it is managed and maintained by a non-commercial organization that is psf python software foundation so official website is www.python.org from where we can easily and freely download the python software now we have versions of pythons now, versions of Python, what is version? Versions means numerical identity. Like we have three major versions. One is 1.x, second is 2.x, and 3.x. So what do we understand by Python 1.x? Now, when we talk about Python 1.x, it is the major version. 1.x is the major version. 2.x is the major version. 3.x is the major version. So, whatever comes after the decimal 
point that is point x point zero point one point two point three four five six seven these are the minor versions one point one one point two one point three one point four these are the minor versions right but one whatever comes after the decimal points is the minor versions and whatever comes before decimal is a major version. Now, when we talk about 1.x, it is the outdated version and Python does not support the backward compatibility. Although we can see this, but 1.x is now not in use. When we talk about 2.x, here 2 is the major version and point x, point 0.1, point till 7 are the minor versions. No, even some of the companies are still using Python 2.x, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Sometimes we have 0 0.1, 0 0.1, like 2.1, 0.1, 2.1.2. It means 0 0.1 after 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or 0 0.7. If we have again decimal and a number, means they are making the minor changes in this. They are updating and making the minor changes in this. But the major changes usually takes after an year. So the hot 3.x is nowadays working, right? So now the la latest, the last year, last year we have Python 3.11. In October 2022, Python 3.11. 12th was released, which is the latest version nowadays. And now, if we talk about Python 3.12.3, 3 .3. 3 is the major version, 0.12 is the minor version, which, which was updated on in on October, in, sorry, in October 2023, 3.12 was released. After that, now we are there every month they're making the minor changes, a month or two months. Now we have 0 0.3, 3 0.12.3 version. So I always recommend you to download the latest version from Python software. Now, how to download this? What you need to do is just go to the official website of Python software. Just go ahead. Just go www dot python dot org the official website just go to it click on this you will get the screen like this you will get the screen like this here you have the options like about downloads documentation community success stories news and events here you need to go to the downloads just downloads. If you want to see the all releases, you, you can go ahead and you can see all the releases here. 3.13, 2029, 10, 2029. It will be pre-released, pre right? On 3.13 will be released on 1st of October, 2024. 3.12 was released on 2nd of October, 2022. Right? So, it is all mentioned here. You can go to the view, like if we go to the older versions, we can see all the releases. All the releases also. Now, go to the wrong download. Just, you can download from here or you can download from here also. Download Python 3.12.4. Now, now it's 3.12.4. Just click on this. It will start downloading. Once you click on this, you will have the options. You will have the options where it is asking for the pip in to install the pip. Just click on all of them. Please remember, ideally shell, you need to click on the ideally shell. You need to click on pip tool also. Click on all the options and then proceed. It is there in my system. So I am getting the option of upgradation. Right, so I am canceling it. You need to download it from here. Is that clear? 
is this clear to you, students? From where, from where you need to download this. So let's proceed further. We can see the older versions also. We can see all the versions. 2.6, 2.5, 2.4, 2.3. See, these are the versions which are in use. 2.0.1 is still there because some of the MNCs are still using this version. Okay, but the latest version I always appreciate. I always tell I always I want you to download the latest version that is 3.12.4. Now let's proceed. We recommend you to download the Python 3.12.4 from www.python.org. Let's proceed. Now we are going to talk about the features of Python. What are the features? Students, when we talk about features, what do we understand by features? Features are nothing but the services or facilities which the Python, which the language developer provides us. Provides us, means as a programmer, we need the features. We need to have the knowledge of features or facilities which will be provided to us for developing the real-time app. Right? Now, we have 11 features in the Python programming language. What are those? They are, that is simple. Freeware and open source. Platform independent language. Dynamically tied programming language. Interpreted programming language. High-level programming language, robust, extensible, embedded, both functional and object-oriented programming language supports third-party APIs. Now, it is very easy to say that it is a simple programming language, freeware and open source and all the features. But we want to discuss now why the Python is known to be a simple programming language. Why it is freeware and open source? Why it is platform independent? Why it is extensible and how does it support the third party API? So we need to have the knowledge of that. Let's proceed and understand what do we understand by free, simple, freeware and open source. Let's proceed with the features. But before that, it is inspired from, we need to know that Python is inspired from the four different programming languages. Like it has learned the functional programming from C, object oriented programming from C++, Modular programming language from Modulo 3 and scripted pro scripting programming from Perl. So, it is inspired for the four different programming languages. C, C++, Modulo 3 and Perl. Now, let's proceed. Why it is known to be a simple programming language? Python is one of the simple programming languages because of its three important technical factors. Now, what are those? First is, it provides the rich set of APIs. APIs means, APIs means, just a second, students. Now, as I've told you that Python programming, uh, APIs is application programming interface. So Python programming provides rich set of APIs so that the Python program your programmers can reuse the predefined code without writing their code so that it is easy to develop. Right? So, whatever code we'll write, we can reuse the, uh, it so that we can easily develop the Python programming language. Now, what is API? API is application programming interface. Please, students, remember that API is a collection of modules. API is what? API is a collection of modules and module is a collection of functions, variables, and classes. Now we will, in the future, we we'll learn what are the functions, what, what do we understand by variable, and what do we understand by the classes. We'll discuss about in details and what are the modules also. 
The first factor is because of its rich set of APIs. Second is, it provides the garbage collector facility. Now, what do we understand by garbage collector? Student, if the Python program can be constructed, it needs to be destructed also. So that it should have the destructor function also. Means the unused memory should be removed. So, it, if we will not remove it, then it will be very difficult for us to save the large amount of data or the company. It's, it will be very difficult for the company to save the large amount of data. In order to go ahead with, we need not to have the destructor. Python programs programming provides the garbage collector first. What does it do? It removes the unused memory space which improves the performance of Python-based applications. So whenever we write the program, the garbage collector comes and collects, removes the unused memories. So it takes care about the automatic memory management. What does it do? It takes care about the automatic memory management. So second feature. First factor was rich set of APIs. Second was its garbage collector facility, which helps in the, which helps in removing the unused methods. Okay. Third factor, it provides the user friendly syntaxes. Now, what do we understand by syntaxes? Student syntaxes are nothing. In the mathematics, we have the formulas, right? Same. In the programming language, we have the syntaxes. Syntaxes, user-friendly syntaxes means we just need to follow the syntaxes. That will be very easy to understand because they're user-friendly. So that the Python programming can develop the error-free programs in a limited span of time. So first factor, why it is known to be a simple programming language? It's rich set of APIs, garbage collector facility, and user-friendly syntaxes. That is why it is known to be a simple programming language. Any questions still here? Any question, you can raise your hand or just drop in a message in the chat box. No question. Is everything clear to you? Please reply in the chat box so that I should proceed further. Yes, it's clear to only one student, two students. Very good. So even students we are, who are from the, not from the software industry, who does not have the, any knowledge about the programming can also go ahead with the Python language because we are going to start from the basic from the scratch the scratch and we'll proceed till advance okay let's go ahead now now second it is platform independent language why it is known to be a platform independent language it is known to be a platform independent language because its data types remains same on all types of OSS. Now, what is OSS? Tell me, students. I want to have knowledge. I want to know the knowledge of you. What is OSS? It is very easy. Give me the answer in the chat box. Quick. Tell me. Tell me, students, quick, I need a reply from you. What is OSS? No answer? Are you people aware of this or no? Yes. Yes. You must have checked on the Google. It is operating system. 
or we can also say it is an operation support system. Right. So its data type remains the same on all the OSS. And if we talk about the platform independent, like effective platform independent network, even whatever in the if uh, platform independent language, whatever value we store will be stored in the form of objects. And even 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 we can store the unlimited amount of uh, like every uh, uh, sorry everything is stored in the form of objects in Java also in Java also. But if we talk about Java, it has size restrictions. It is size restricted. Whereas if we talk about the Python, we can store unlimited amount of data. So whatever we save will be saved in the form of objects in Python. Right? See, Java objects contains size restricted, whereas Python objects contains unlimited size and unlimited values can be stored. And if we have the garbage uh, garbage facility also, garbage collector facility, which will actually remove the unused memory. Right? So we can store the unlimited amount. In Python programming, in Python language, all the values are stored in the form of objects. Freeware and open source. Now, the third feature. Freeware and open source. Why it is known to be freeware? Because we can freely and easily download it from its official website. Now, what is an official website? www.python.org. I have shown you the process, right? You can show, just go to the official website of Python software and you can freely download it from its official website. Open source. Students, the standard name of Python is C Python. Please remember this. C Python is a standard name of the Python. So whatever we'll store in the Python object, whatever program we store in the Python object, that will be stored internally. It will be considered as a C Python object. Right, but we need to save the file with .py extension. We cannot save it with C Python. Some of the company vendors came forward and customized it. Right, customize the C Python and use the customized version as their in-house tools. Like we have J Python, which is useful for running the Java-based applications, or it is also known as Jython, Iron Python, or IPython. So these distribu uh, distributors are using Python by the name of Jython, JPython. Why? Because it is helpful in running the Java-based applications. Iron Python because it is used to run the chash.net application, right? MicroPython. It is used to develop the microcontroller. Ruby Python used to run the Ruby based, used to develop the Ruby based application. Sorry. Anaconda Python, we can use. It is helpful in big data applications. Like we have the very big, big applications, Haroop applications. We can develop that with the Anaconda. Right? So some of the company vendors come and distributors change their name according to their company. Now fourth. So we are done with the three features. First is simple, three factors, then platform independent. Third, we have freeware and open source. Fourth is dynamically type programming language. Students, we have two types of programming language. One is static type programming language and second is dynamically type programming language. Now, what is static type? What is the difference between static type programming language and dynamically type programming language? 
students whenever we state in the static type programming language declaration of a variable is mandatory programmer must define a variable with data type otherwise they will get the compile time errors like int a b c the declaration variable this is a b c these are the variables and declaration of the variable is mandatory a is equal to without before writing a we need to declare it a is 10 which is int b is 20 which is again integer value c is equal to a so this takes place in c c plus plus java dot net and all the applications but if we talk about the python programming language students when you will download the python let me tell you you will when you open it you will get this screen like this okay you need to click here you will have the option of properties just go to properties here here you can choose the font of your choice and the font size also font size also i have kept the big font size so that it will be helpful for you to understand here we have the fonts also different fonts in whichever font you want to use you can go ahead with it. after that click on ok then you will get it now once you will download it in my system it says python 3.11.4 it is downloaded which was downloaded on june 7 2020 now let's go ahead now what I'm going to do is, I'm telling you that in the Java C, C++, it is mandatory. But in case, it is mandatory to define a variable. But if I write A is equal to 10. Now, if I write print A, type of A. It will automatically gives us the result that this is an integer type. B is equal to 2.5, right? Now print B, typo B. This is a floating point one. So we are not mentioning that what type of variable it is. Now, C is equal to A plus B. Now print C. Type of C. So whatever value will be in the float format. That is a floating point value. If I write A is equal to 12. B is equal to 20. C is equal to A plus B. I am not at all mentioning that what type of value it is now if i simply write a i get the output b i get the output c i get the output so declaration is not mandatory here in case if i want to know what type of value it is i need to write print a i get the output print b i get the output print c get the output again with the declaration yeah, so that is the major difference between the static type and the dynamically typed programming language. So Python is known to be a dynamically typed programming language because declaration is not mandatory here. See, I have given the examples A is equal to 10, B is equal to 1.2, C is equal to A plus. Whenever I write print A type of A, we are getting this is a class entry. This is a class float. And what type of value we'll get? That will be a class float. So all the values in the Python program, whatever values we are writing here, is stored in the form of objects. Clear? Understood the difference between the static type programming language and the dynamically type programming language? Any questions? Any questions, students? If you have any, just drop in the message in the chat box. Yes, one important thing I wanted to tell you that in case you have any queries regarding the session, 
in case you want to contact us regarding the session, just mail me or any query regarding whatever we have studied in the session. You can mail me at ritu dot logic labs at the rate gmail dot com. Please note it down ritu dot logic labs at the rate gmail dot com. You can drop me the mail here if you have any query regarding the course. Rest you can contact our support team. What does mean by values are storing like objects? Can you explain please? Yes, definitely. See, as told you, whatever we are storing, values like A is a variable, we can see. Just a second, I'll show you. Now you can see A is equal to 10. Now A is a variable and 10 is a value. All right. So the value of A what is this? This will be stored in the form of objects in the memory of the software. You understand? Now, whatever I store, I'm writing I'll get the out. Although, as I've told you, that in the Java also, whatever we store will being stored in the form of object, but Java is size restricted. In spite of this, if we talk about the Python, we can store unlimited amount of it. They are not storing like of objects, they will be stored in the form of objects. Clear? Let's proceed. Now, fifth, it is a interpreted programming language. Why it is known to be the interpreted programming language? As I've told you, whatever, whenever we develop any Python program, we need to save the file with the extension .py. Like I'm saving while file. File name is sum. So I'm saving the file name sum.py. Sum.py. So whenever we execute the Python program, two processes take place internally. One is compilation process and second is execution process. Now, what do we understand by compilation process and execution process? We have just saved, saved the file in the dot with the dot p by extension now why what is the compilation and what is execution see students what happens is i have saved one file in the form of by the name of some dot p by this is a source code of the program right i've saved this one now compilation process what does the compiler do it will read for the source code line by line check for the syntaxes Please understand this. This is very important. It will go ahead with the source code. Read the program line by line. Check for the syntaxes. If no error found at that time, it will convert it into the with the dot .pyc extension. That is wild code, which is an internal process. Getting me? This is the intermediate code. As I have told you, it is known to be a C Python. So internally, the file will be saved in the with the dot .pyc extension, which is a bytecode. Then the PVM comes. Okay, it will read the bytecode. Execution phase will take place now. It will read it the bytecode line by line convert it into the machine understandable language. Now we know machine understandable language is what? It is a binary language. 
okay, which is read by the operating systems and processor, and finally it gives the result. So this is the whole process which internally takes place. Let's understand this now. In compilation process, the Python source code submitted to the Python compiler, right? It reads the source code, check for the errors by verifying syntaxes. This is what I've told you. And if no error found, then Python compilers converts it into the bytecode with an extension .pyc. If the error funds in the source code, then that error will be displayed on the console. After the compilation process, once it is saved in the form of bytecode, it will, the execution process will start. The, now, what happens in the execution process? The PVM reads the Python intermediate code, bytecode line by line, and converts it into the machine understandable language. And finally, gives the result in the form of language which is understandable by the end user, right? So Python program execution, compilation process and execution process is taking place line by line conversion and it is one of the interpretation based programming language. Now, what do we understand by PVM? As I've told you, PVM, go ahead and read it line by line. Now, what do we understand by PVM? PVM is a Python virtual machine. It is one of the program in Python software whose role is to read the source code line by line. At, sorry, uh, not the source code, bytecode and convert it into the machine understandable code. Is this clear, students? This is something very important. Is this clear? As I've told you, why the standard name of Python is C Python. So that is why whatever will save will be saved in the bytecode.pyc. Bytecode. What I've told you, this is an intermediate. Bytecode means in a C. As I've told you, we have saved one file that is .py extension because it is a fi Python file. So we have saved it with the .py. When the compilation process takes place, it will convert it into the bytecode. Bytes, like in the bytes. It will save it in the form of bytes. It will check for the syntaxes. If there is an error in the syntax, we'll get the syntax error. Or any other we'll, the error, we will get the error. But it, this is bytecode is an intermediate because standard name of Python is C Python. So that is why it is saving it with the .pyc extension, which is a bytecode. Bytecode is an intermediate code. Clear? Is this clear? Any questions now? Any questions? Is everything clear to you? So we have discussed the five features till now. Any questions if you can, you can ask me right now. No questions. Okay, good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind up the session today the here only rest the other features we will be discussing tomorrow and we'll discuss what actually the variable is how to use the variable right and what type of variable name we can use clear will that be fine Fine. So we'll discuss, we'll wind up the session here only. Rest we'll discuss tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. And you will get you can you will get the chat join our WhatsApp community so that you can actually get the 
announcement you can get the today's session recording first two session recordings will be uploaded on our youtube channels and you will get the link of that once you'll join the announcements go to the community go ahead with the announcements then it will be easier for you so we'll see you tomorrow students till then take care of yourself goodbye good night